Hello, and welcome to the tutorial for the Dart Editor. My name is Devin Carew. I'm a software engineer at Google and a member of the Dart project. Dart is a new structured web programming language. The Dart language is joined by libraries, a virtual machine, tools, and a Dart to JavaScript compiler. Today, I'll be taking you on a tour of the development environment for Dart. You can download a copy of the editor at dartline.org editor. This download also includes a copy of the Chromium browser with Dart support built in, the Dart virtual machine, as well as the class libraries and the Dart to JavaScript compiler. Dart, the language and its libraries, the virtual machine, and the tools are all open source. Visit dartline.org for more info on Dart, including code samples, documentation, and the latest Dart news. So now let's dig into the editor. First, when you open the editor, it comes up with a page of some sample applications. We'll click on the clock sample app in order to open it. You can see that it's opened the clock project over here, as well as some Dart files, and the main clock Dart file in the editing window. In order to run this application, click on the Run button. And this will launch the application in a copy of Dartium. Dartium is a special build of the Chromium browser that ships with the editor and includes a Dart virtual machine. It supports Dart natively. But we also have a good story for running your Dart application on browsers that don't support Dart. We have a Dart compiler, Dart to JavaScript, that compiles your Dart application to JavaScript. Let's see how that works. If you choose the Tools Generate JavaScript menu item, it runs Dart to JS and produces a JavaScript file's output. You can see the output here, and that there's a new Dart to JS file in the files view. We can open that file to look at the compiled JavaScript. So now let's run this Dart application in a browser without Dart support. From the Run menu, choose the Manage Launches menu item. There we'll create a new launch type, a JavaScript, a JavaScript launch, and select the HTML file we want to run, clock.html. We'll name this launch and run it. It'll invoke Dart to JavaScript and generate JavaScript and launch a new browser. So this is the Dart application running in Chrome and just running JavaScript uh, natively. An important point to note is that the same HTML file is running both the Dart and JavaScript versions of the app. Let's see how that works. If we view the page source, we can see that the HTML file is referencing the Dart application. So this will run just natively in a browser with native Dart support. <clears throat> Um, and if you have a browser without that, it invokes this Dart to JS script, which first checks to see if Dart is available in the browser. And if not, it rewrites your application Dart references to append .js to it. So that'll invoke the output of Dart to JS, and your Dart application will just run in that browser. So now let's open a more complicated example. We'll be working with this example for the rest of this tutorial. The file open menu item. We'll let you open existing applications and work with them in the editor. I'm going to choose one I wrote for the purposes of this tutorial. And it's open, and you can see it in the files view, and open the main file for it. The app consists of a CSS file, HTML, and a Dart file. Uh, let's run it very quickly and see what it does. OK, so it's a visualization of the solar system. Uh, with the sun and uh, the moon and a couple of asteroids distributed in there. One of the things the editor is good at is navigating and visualizing your application. Because Dart is a structured programming language, we have a very good semantic knowledge of your source base. First off, let's, let's open the outline view. This is going to show you the types and methods in your, in your file you're editing. So we see that we have a planetary body class. It has an add planet method, a draw children, and a draw self method, and uh, a solar system class, which knows how to draw itself and uh, draw its planets. And we have two top level functions a main, which is your entry point, and a show FPS method. Another useful thing we support is hyperlinking within your application. So you can jump to the definition of classes and methods you use. I'll jump to this constructor definition and back and uh, this method definition. And you're not just limited to hyperlinking within your application. You can navigate into the core libraries as well. Let's see an example of that. So I want to see how this uh, log method is implemented. I can uh, hyperlink into it. And I see the actual um, definition of it. Um, and that brings me to another point, is that the full SDK sources are available in the editor. 
So you can see all the libraries in the SDK, and you can explore them and, uh, and look at their implementations. Another feature we have is the colors view. This view lets you see all references to a field or, our, or our, all colors of a method. This is something that is possible because we have a full semantic knowledge of the source base. Let's see this in action. So if I select this window field, right click on it, and choose open colors, we'll see that we have lots of references to it. And um, we can dive into the specific references. This is in our own source base. We can look and see um, in the actual SDK sources, it references the window field. And um, the colors view supports uh, finding reference methods as well. Another useful way to navigate in the editor is using our search box. So let's say that I know uh, I wanted to display a browser alert box in my application. <clears throat> I might not know exactly what class it's defined on or what the method is called, but I can guess that it'd be something like alert. So let's type that in. And I can select occurrences of, occurrences of alert, and it searches through the user code as well as the SDK code. I see I have several matches, and I'm going to explore this one in the HTML library. And I find a likely candidate. It's an alert method, <clears throat> and it takes a string as a parameter. Using the outline view, I can see that it's defined on a class called DOM window impl. And if I look at that implementation, I can see that it implements the window interface. So from that, I can reasonably infer that the window object is going to have an alert method on it. Let's um, <clears throat> type that in and see what happens. I'm going to save and run my application. And we get an alert box. So our search isn't just a textual search, it's a semantic search as well. <clears throat> if I type in planetary body into the search box, I can see the type that I've defined in my application and jump, jump to the definition. We also have support for discovering documentation and user code. Dart supports the notion of literate programming in the form of Dart doc comments. Here's an example of one, and here's an example of another. The Dart doc syntax is a form of markdown and is basically a very simple, readable form of inline documentation. We parse it in the editor, and whenever you hover over an element that's been documented, uh, you get a tooltip with the Dart doc inline. This is useful for SDK code as well. Let's see that. So it, maybe I've forgotten the exact return type of random, but I can hover over it and see that um, it's specified return value between uh, 0 and 1. Finally, all of our documentation for our core libraries is available online. You can navigate to them from the Help API Reference menu item. The editor has full semantic knowledge of the user's code, and it maintains this knowledge by continually analyzing the source code. There's no explicit compile step. As soon as the user pauses typing or saves a file, we reanalyze the modified file. Let's see an example of this. In the start method, we'll change the call from, to sun add planet to sun add planetoid. If I save, the editor shows a, a warning saying it doesn't know anything about sun, the sun planetoid method. <clears throat> now this particular problem is a warning and not an error. The editor thinks it know what the type of object is, but the methods are, and what methods are available on it, the final arbiter of this bit of code will be the runtime. If this object at runtime does not support the add planetoid method, the code will run just fine. If we run this code, we see that darting through an exception and that it, it was a no such method exception and it really doesn't think that this method exists. So let's remove that method. And uh, instead, we'll modify this planetary body constructor. If we change the name of it and save, again, the editor doesn't think that uh, constructor exists. But now it's an error, not a warning. And that's because sometimes in our type system, we really do, do need to know the type of, a, of an object, and especially when we're creating it. One of the strengths of Dart is that it's a structured programming language. If you make use of the optional types in your application, the development tools can form a good semantic picture of your code base. This allows for sophisticated features like code refactorings. The ability to easily and safely refactor code is a huge benefit. It allows you to work on large code bases and bigger teams. It allows you to change and modify the code over time in order to keep that code healthy. The Dart editor supports several refactorings. I'm going to show off our rename refactoring now. <clears throat> Let's say I decide that this addPlanet method really should be called addPlanetoid. I can select it, 
and choose Edit, Rename. So then type in Planetoid and hit Return. Uh, the method name is changed at that call site and all other call sites. And if I hyperlink to the definition, you can see it's changed there as well. I can hyperlink back. And um, our refactorings also have full undo and redo support. Another refactoring we have is extracting expression into a local variable. So let's go to the calculate speed method. And if you look at, we see we have uh, several constants that we could reasonably extract into a local variable. We go to the edit menu, choose extract local variable, add a name for it, hit return. And we see it's done the refactoring and it's actually also inferred uh, that the type of the local variable should be a double. So now let's play around with one of the hallmarks of a modern development environment code completion. We'll go to the start method and extract out a local variable for where we create Mars. And now I want to add a few satellites to Mars, but I'm not really familiar with the planetary body class or which methods it supports. If I just type it in and invoke code completion, it'll come up with all the fields and methods available on the planetary body class, including one called add planet, which looks like a likely candidate. Now we want to create a new planet. I type in the constructor. I let code completion finish the rest of the typing for me, including filling in all the variable names. Let's finish this up. Save and run the application. So you can see that Mars now has a new moon around it. So code completion is also great for exploring APIs in the SDK. If I navigate to the draw background method, I can see that we're drawing into a context object. If I want to see what other drawing operations it supports, I can invoke code completion and browse the available fields and methods. So I see that I have um, some shadowing operations available, Bezier curves, and general drawing operations. In order to allow you to use untyped code and still get the benefits of our editor features, we've included a type inference engine. It'll make a best effort to infer what the type of your var variable is and treat it accordingly. It'll get code completion as well as verification of fields and method calls, all without having to explicitly identify the type of your variable. Let's see this in action. I'm going to go to the draw children method. If you look in here, you can see that we have an untyped of our planet variable. Because it's in a for loop, iter iterating over a list of planetary body objects, we can infer that the planet itself is a planetary body. If we activate code completion for that variable, we can see that it does in fact have the appropriate fields and methods for a planetary body class. And if we add a uh, var foo declaration, and try and code complete it, we can see that we get all the valid completions for the string class. So the editor has correctly inferred that this untyped var foo is in fact a string. One of the hallmarks of a modern development environment is debugging, and the editor brings full support for source level debugging to Dart. We allow you to debug your applications running in Dartium and support the usual debugging suspects like breakpoints, variable inspection, and stepping. And one nice feature is that because of the way the virtual machine is implemented, turning on debugging by and large does not affect your application's execution speed. So let's take a look at debugging in action. We'll set a breakpoint in the start method and run the application. This will launch Dartium and, and connect the debugger. And now you see we've hit the breakpoint. We can see the call stack and the frames on the stack. You can navigate around and inspect local variables. Simple object types like ints and strings we show the values of, and more complicated objects we call the toString method of. You can see that the Earth object just says instance of planetary body. This is the default two string result, but let's change that to something that's a little bit more descriptive. We'll navigate to the planetary body class and add a two string method. If we save and rerun the application, we can see that we've hit the same breakpoint. 
but the, um, the value for Earth that's displayed is now the new two-string method. And notice that we were able to get the result of the code change without having to restart Dartium. Another way to inspect local variables is by hovering over them. So we can hover over the Earth variable, and it calls the two-string method on it. And we can hover over the this variable, and it'll call the default uh, two-string of the solar system class. What's nice about this is that you can see the values of the variables without having to lose context or try to locate them in the variables view. Now let's show some stepping. Let's set a breakpoint in the draw method and resume execution. We hit the breakpoint and we can see the values of the local variables. But more importantly, we can also trace the execution of the application. So let's step into the draw background call and step over a few times and step out. If we step into the draw planets call, we can see something interesting. If we step in again, you'd expect to call it step into the sun draw method. But we actually step into the width getter. This is because what looks like a property axis is really an invocation of a getter. The debugger also supports resuming execution and terminating the process. While Dart's primary focus is on the web, we also support command line applications. In order to show this off, we'll open one of the examples that ships with the editor. If you go to the Tools Welcome Page menu item, you can see that we have a time server example. This is a simple HTTP server that responds with the current date and time. We can click on it in order to open the application, and then click on the Run button to run it. For command line applications, just like in Dartium launches, the process output shows up in the console view at the bottom of the editor. From this view, you can clear the process output and can, cho and can choose to terminate the application. Let's run it again and verify that the web server is in fact running. So let's copy this URL, paste it into Chrome, and we see that we get a response back from the web server. And if we go back to the console output, we can see that we've got several requests for resources. Diving into the source, we can see that the application imports the Dart IO library. This is the main library for command line applications. It supports file and networking operations, process management functions, and other operations useful in a command line non-browser environment. Again, in order to find out more info about this library, you can hyperlink into it and explore the implementation or get more documentation online using the API reference. Thank you for watching this tour of the Dart Editor. To get more information about Dart, please visit dartline.org. And to download the editor, visit dartline.org editor. Thanks again.